Well, it's pretty big. The way you'd normally build the frame is with four thick solid pieces to whatever dimension you wanted. Maybe you'd route out the back of it and make a place for the mirror to sit. However, this frame is so big, we gotta save a little bit of weight, I have to be able to transport it on location and assemble it there, and it's gotta match the existing frames in the room. The existing frames in the room are kind of that plastic covered wood faux whatever, <laughs> and uh, we can do that with some vinyl, but it's gonna be a little non-traditional. So I've got a half inch piece of MDF, that's what I'm gonna use for my frame. So our frame size is eight by two, we're working with half inch plywood, this piece will be eight, this piece is 1.5, giving us a two inch edge on our frame. This is the inside of the frame, this is the part that'll be holding the mirror. So this creates a one and a half inch reveal, the mirror sits in here, this piece is one, 0.25 and they've got a retention piece here basically that's glued to the back it'll hold the mirror in place so that's our basic construction we'll create four big pieces like this then we'll create a way to bolt them together with miters and I think uh, hopefully it'll work out So we've got two inches here for our depth of our frame. We've got a one and a half inch inset. Then we've got a quarter inch right here to actually hold the mirror. But then we've got to have a piece on the top to retain the mirror. Well, I only have half inch material. And if we take a half inch piece, I'm sure you can see where I'm going with this, and we measure it, we don't have enough space to get this right. I'm gonna have to rip the half inch piece and it's not really an issue. This is just holding the back of the mirror in place. Even if people were to pick it up from the front and let the mirror hang there, which would be a stupid thing to do. <laughs> but even if they did that, it would be totally fine uh, because it spans the entire outside edge of the mirror. So I think it's totally fine. Uh, it is an oversight on my part, but you know, things happen. Now that I've got the basic frame pieces built, it's kind of a do or die moment. I've got to cut perfect 45 degree miters on all these pieces without any gaps. Otherwise I get to go back, get new material and start all over again. So I bought a new saw. It's the miter saw 3000 with the new laser tech. No, no, it's, it's not. It's the updated model of the Queenby Harbor Freight model I had before, but I think it'll do the job. Either way, wish me luck. <laughs>
So I've got my square here, moment of truth. Let's put them together, see if we've got a perfect 45. And I think we got a problem. So look at this. We're flat against this side, and we've got a gap here. Well, luckily, I thought ahead, and I know that everything goes wrong all the time. <laughs> so you may have spotted that I have a X here and a check mark here. This one's good 45, this one is not. So I cut these oversize. I'll be able to go back and trim it to the correct size. I cut all the corners just to double check, make sure my measurements were on and see what the saw was doing since it's a new saw. So I know that I have to go back and cut these to perfect 45. I know a lot of times the video editing makes it seem like things go perfectly, but let me show you this. I did actually mess up the first side that I drilled because I wasn't using the drill block to keep my drill 90 degrees. So I did have to fill those holes and re-drill it. So not everything goes as planned, but if you're doing something a little bit new and you plan for the first couple times to be a learning process, then it all just becomes part of the project. So when you bolt this corner together, this side of the bracing is sort of trapped inside the frame. This side is loose, so I was a little bit worried about it, and I wanted to cut some inserts here to sort of support that edge so it didn't pull out whenever you bolt this whole thing together. Because of the magic of geometry, if you take a piece like this, and you cut this piece off, and you run it through the saw this way, and then you run it through the saw this way, you actually get the angle for the corner. So you saw me cutting those little tiny triangle weird pieces those are the corner pieces that I just ended up landing on the angle for. Sometimes things work out when you don't expect it. I think it should be more than enough screws. It's probably even a little bit overkill because I don't know how many pounds a gold grabber screw holds, but it's probably more than this. <laughs> So I did make a bit of a mistake here. I should have cut these down before I put them in, but <laughs> but I'm actually gonna use the screws that they included here. They're not bad. This hanger is supposed to support 300 pounds. Whether I trust that, <laughs> I'm not sure. They want me to put it up with these little half inch screws and I, uh, I just don't trust it. I just don't trust it. You get it in the right vicinity and you just slide it right in there and it hangs on the wall. I might have to shim this a little bit though. Since we were a little bit short, what I ended up doing is just taking a piece of hard maple, cutting that to size. I'll re-drill these holes through here, and that'll work as a spacer. A uh, little bit of an oversight on my part. I should have measured a little more carefully, but, you know, stuff happens. Okay, I think that should put me right about where I need to be with this. Let's double check the measurement one more time. Put me exactly where I need to be when it's in that slot. Looks pretty good.
exact size. While I'm going to be attaching these pieces with bolts, there are a ton of different ways to attach the frame pieces together depending on the build and material, such as brackets or pocket holes. Well, it's pretty big. After finessing the joints a little bit, things are looking pretty good. I took the frame apart, now we gotta sand it and seal it, and then we can wrap it. I'm using shellac to seal the surface because MDF is a pretty porous material and can be really dusty. So in order to make sure that the vinyl's not peeling off and we're not encountering a bunch of dust, I put a shellac layer on which makes a hard top surface for the vinyl to bond to and also prevents all that dust from peeling up the vinyl over time causing problems with the vinyl finish. Now for putting on the vinyl. First I lay out my length and I'll cut it to size with a sharp pair of scissors. If I was smart, I would have done a better job cutting the edges on a diagonal to match the frame, but I didn't, and this was a mistake, and <laughs> you'll see why in a minute. To install the vinyl, I start from the edge, removing the backing with the vinyl in place, peeling the back as I go, making sure that I keep the vinyl parallel with my workpiece so I don't skew the pattern or end up with any uneven amounts of vinyl on either side. I work my hand back and forth to eliminate any bubbles or creases that I see come up in the vinyl, also applying pressure to make sure that there's even adhesion across the entire surface. Then I use the glare from the lights looking at an angle to make sure I haven't missed a spot where the vinyl's raised. Creasing the edges may be the most important part of doing a vinyl wrap. I run my hand over the edge pressing to create a hard crease wherever the vinyl will bend around a corner. Then I start wrapping the edges. I was a little bit worried about adhesion with less surface area on all the edges, so I used some Super 77 spray glue to make sure everything was stuck permanently. And this works great unless you have to remove the vinyl at any point, which uh, may or may not happen later in this video. The inside slot where the mirror sits was a little bit tricky. I had to break out the spreader tool to help me to push the vinyl into the crevice evenly. I'm pulling the vinyl tight around the corner, making sure that everything looks smooth. Not really worried about stretching or causing finger imprints while pulling the vinyl because the inside sections will be tucked and trimmed once the wrap is complete. On the inside edges, I'm still making an effort to create the creases on the corner, but all of this is a little bit less crucial because it's going to be hidden up against the wall. Now for the tricky part, wrapping the miters, which to be fair, my first couple tries weren't very pretty, but luckily these faces are going to be bolted together, so nobody's really ever going to see it. And poke a couple holes for the screws, and we're done. I wouldn't try to drill these holes, I've never had much success drilling through vinyl. see the insides of the corners at all so I can always cover that with another piece um, as long as this will cover the front so I'm a little short on this corner so 
it's all the way to the end on that side and I think it should patch fine if you look at the pattern I marked the pattern with a couple lines as long as this stays in line I don't think you'll be able to see it this is also the bottom of the frame so you'll always be looking down at this um, and I don't think you'll see the seam I'm gonna try it and if you can end up seeing the seam then I guess I'll have to uh, order some more and do one solid piece seems kind of half fast but uh, <laughs> you gotta, gotta make it work Let me see if I can cut a little jagged line. Maybe I can blend the seam a little bit better. <laughs> it looks pretty close. <laughs> I guess it's bad planning on my part. I thought I measured and maybe I overcut a little too much. So at this point I kind of can't help but laugh. The entire inside of this. So it started ripping along here. There's a little, there's ripped pieces here. So I had to cut out all of that. I guess I could try to peel this up. I don't know if it even will because it's spray glued down. But stuff like this, oh man, that bothers me. That bothers me. So this is the nightmare that ended up happening. I had to cut it all out. I lifted up this edge. I'm going to put that underneath there, close this edge down, and the inside will be sealed and hopefully it'll be fine. <laughs> it's funny that this is the last one that I'm doing. Normally the first one, maybe the second one is the one you have problems with. Not the last one. So this got pretty much pieced together. I uh, asked her about it. She said it's probably fine. You know, if I get there to install it and we get three sides on and she says this one, you know, doesn't look good or four sides on, then I can always pull this one off. We can leave the mirror in the frame and then I can bring this back to the shop and uh, get some new vinyl on it and pull all the other stuff off, which sounds kind of like a nightmare, but I want her to, uh, to be happy with what she got. So... I can't remember the location, but if it's in a corner or something, uh, maybe you won't even notice it. So I've got all the pieces wrapped, but you can't have a fake wood vinyl wrapped project without including a crappy Allen key to uh, put all the pieces together with. So let me find one of those. about to head to my friend's place to install this mirror frame. Super anxious, I hope everything fits. Uh, I guess we will find out. Okay, so I should be able to just assemble one corner, set it on its end, slide the mirror in, assemble the second corner, put it on top and did you engrave these like this? This is where the mirror's gonna go? Is yeah. It here? Yeah, so it's actually, they're actually pieces.
interesting way to build this project. I've never seen it quite done like this before. Saved us a lot of weight over natural wood and it'll never warp or twist or come off the wall. I think it looks pretty good. I was even able to match the wood grain texture of some of the other frames in the room pretty well, even though it's a different vinyl. But the more important thing is, what do you think about it? I love it. It turned out amazing. And you were matching it with other frames and it's absolutely perfect. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what matters to me. I want to thank you guys for watching. If you have any comments, go ahead and leave them down below. Feel free to like and subscribe. Until the next video, you guys have a good one. Just like that. Is it like that? Is that how I run it through? How do I run it through? Can I not? <laughs> this is not that technical of a thing. Can I just get the dang screw in the hole? Thank you, sir. Can you freaking stop? Oh, good gravy. If you guys like this video, go ahead and. What are they doing? They're commenting? And commenting. They're liking, comment, subscribe. Liking, so subscribe. <laughs> go ahead one more time. Uh. And that's what's important. See, this is what I do by myself. <laughs> 800 times. I love 800 it. times. I love it. I'm so bad at lines. <laughs> yeah. oh, I can see myself in your mirror. How convenient. <laughs> Lovely. See in your mirror. You look great. Where I want to be. <laughs> stupid. That's stupid. This is why I write lines. I gotta look at the lines. <laughs> I gotta look at the lines. <laughs> Thanks no. for watching. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Here we are with a crappy updated model of the crappy old model of the crappy model of the model that's crappy. <laughs> Stupid. <laughs> Looks pretty good too. I was evil. <laughs> I love you so much. I just, I'll just do it over until I start to lose, completely lose my mind. Because I'm like 40 times you in. You don't even know what you're saying. Yeah, and I just can't. And I'll you're become like, so actually, frustrated. Worse the more yeah. that I say it. No, I think there are a few bloopers where I look like I'm gonna like throw something. Because I'm like 40 takes and everything, and I'm just like, <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>